Algebra 3, Lesson 31, we're going to talk about symmetry, reflections, and translations. Uh, the big part of this is determining whether or not something is symmetric about the x-axis, the y-axis, or the origin. And that just comes down to some simple definitions that show up in your book on page uh, 212. So these are some things that you'll want to remember, highlight, underline, um, anything like that. So if you look at page 212, in the top paragraph, it's going to talk about axis of symmetry. And you'll notice a sentence there that's all in bold. Do you guys see that? OK. That says, if replacing x with a negative x in any equation uh, in x and y results in an equivalent equation, the graph of the equation will be symmetric about the y-axis. So if we look up here at this, this first question, you know, we have y equals 6x, right? OK. So basically what we want to be able to do is do we get, um, let's see, if I want to make sure I understand if there's doing anything. So if you have the equation y equals x squared, and we replace that with y equals negative x in parentheses squared, um, we're going to see that's equivalent because the value of y will be the same for positive x or negative x. All right, so that's telling me that I am symmetrical about the y-axis. Do we follow that? Okay, so, you know, is y equals 6x the same as y equals 6 to the negative x? Is that the same? Well, it basically is saying is y equals 6x the same as y equals negative 6x. Well, let's, you no, know, it's not the same. Right? Because, right, they're not, they're different. Okay? Uh, let's see. Now, the opposite is true. If replacing the y with negative y in any equation in x and y results in an equivalent equation, the graph of the equation will be symmetrical about the x-axis. So if we're looking for a uh, use symmetry test to verify any of the three symmetries. So if we want to know then is... Uh, negative y equal to 6x. Is that the same thing as y equals uh, 6x? No, it's different, right? It, these things aren't canceling out. Even if I divide by negative 1, right, I'm getting y equals negative 6x there, okay, which we already established was not the same, okay? Now, at the bottom, it says the graph of any equation in x and y that is symmetric about both the x-axis and symmetric about the y-axis is said to be symmetric about the origin. Okay. Now, if they had included squares in this, like let's say that this had been an x squared right there, that would have changed things because negative times a negative is going to be a positive. Therefore, I would still be symmetrical about the y-axis. If the y had been squared, right, when we square that negative, it's going to come out positive again. We would have been symmetrical about the, uh, the x-axis, right? And if both of those things had come out as true, then we would have been symmetrical about the origin. So what I want to warn you of on these is don't go based upon appearances alone, right? What they're talking about symmetrical is, can I flip that across the y-axis and it be the same? Well, not really, not necessarily. All right, or can I flip it across the x-axis and equivalent? All right, well, not necessarily, no. Now, with like, let's say we had uh, a hyperbole, or, you know, I think that's what I'm thinking of. What's that? Well, it has a mathematical term to it. Let's talk about a parabola. Okay, maybe that'll help you out a little bit. If I had something like this, right, where the vertex was on the y-axis, right, then that would be symmetric about the y-axis because I could flip it across the y-axis and it would still be the same graph. Does that make sense? Um, a lot of times with a hyperbole, right, those things are drawn typically like that. Well, that's symmetrical about the x-axis. Now, what's going to be symmetrical about both the x and y-axis, um, which is symmetrical about the origin, is a circle 
whose center is the origin. I can flip it across the x-axis, I can flip it across the y-axis, and it's still the same graph. All right, so there are some visual cues that can tell us when these things are going to be the same. Okay. All right, number two, use symmetry uh, test to verify any of the three symmetries, x-axis, y-axis, or origin. Uh, let's see. That seems to apply here. So um, we would put in a negative x, right? Is, but that would be y equals negative 4x plus 2. Is that going to be symmetrical about the y-axis? And even appearing, is that going to be the same graph whenever I y-axis? No. So it doesn't pass my y-axis symmetry test. Okay, what about symmetrical about the x-axis? If I make that a y, a negative y, and I divide it out by negative 1, do I get the same graph? No, I don't. Right? That would be saying negative y equals 4x plus 2. Right? I would divide everything by negative 1. I'd get y equals negative 4x minus 2. It has a different y-intercept. It has a different slope. Right? It's not symmetrical about the y-axis. Or sorry, about the x-axis. And because it's not symmetrical about the y-axis or the x-axis, is it symmetrical about the origin? No. Okay? All right. Uh, the graph has none of these three symmetries. All right, let's keep moving along here. All right, so here we're looking at some functions, and we want to look and see how these functions are manipulated and what different things do. All right, so uh, we've talked about, let's say, this type of equation here, where we had y equals a x minus h squared plus k. Does anybody remember that equation? Okay, we're dealing with this a little bit in Algebra 2, so I know it's been covered because you had to have Algebra 2 before you got here, right? So uh, let me just kind of brief you on different parts of, of this type of equation, then we'll get into what is happening here, okay? So the positive or negative tells me whether or not this is opening up or down, okay? And this is all in reference to um, a parabola. This is a parabola equation that you're seeing here in blue. Okay. The a fraction, or this a, will tell me whether it's wide or narrow in terms of how it opens up. This tells me x, uh, h and k. Tell me about the vertex, or tell me how the movement is moving from the parent function to another location. So minus, minus inside the parentheses always tells me that I'm moving to the right. So minus equals right, plus equals left. Okay, now, so this is left and right because it deals with, you know, in relation to x. And then out here, outside that set of parentheses, tells me about my y movement. Plus is up, minus is down. Okay, so even though we're dealing with a different type of equation, the same rules still apply here. It's just a different type of line that we're drawing. Okay? So, if I can erase this for a second, and we understand some of the rules to how we can manipulate equations and their graphs. It says the graph of the function f of x equals 3 fourths the square root of x is shown on the left below. The graph on the right is the same graph reflected across the x-axis. We want to write the equation that would flip it downward. Okay, so do you remember a little bit about what I showed you in the previous equation? What would cause a parabola to open down instead of up? It's the negative out front. So in our case, the only thing that we need to change to flip it is to make this a negative 3 fourths radical x. That would flip it down. Okay? Now, one thing that um, I didn't get into in terms of that equation is how could I flip something across the y axis? Right? Well, flipping something across the y axis in this case would happen if I had y equals, let's say, 3 fourths negative 
our radical negative x. That would flip it across the y-axis. Okay, so a negative in front of the x inside the radical will flip it across the y-axis. Do we understand some of this? Okay. So what 3 fourths is telling me is how wide or how close to the x-axis or how far away from the x-axis that is bending. All right, let's look at number four. The graph of the function y equals one-half radical x is shown on the left. The graph on the right is the same graph reflected across the x-axis. We should be able to see that c is going to be our answer here, right? They didn't really change much for us, right? All right, so let's go down to question number five. Okay, notice that a lot has happened in, in question number five, right? It looks like it's been flipped and moved all over the place. The graph of the function uh, f of x equals 2 radical x is on the left. The graph on the right is the same graph reflected. So it's reflected across the x-axis. It's translated one unit to the left and three units up. We want to write the equation for the graph. Okay, so let me just put things this way. All right, this will flip it down, right? That'll flip it across the x-axis, right? It's having a negative out front here, okay? A negative here will flip it across the, uh, will flip it across the y-axis, okay? If I want to, let's see, if I want to translate it to the left, I'm going to put plus. If I want to translate it down, I'll put minus. Okay, so let's look at everything that they're asking us to do to this equation. All right, let's go back to our f of x. Okay, let's look at the first thing. It's reflected across the x-axis. So what's the first thing I'm going to put in here? A negative 2. Okay, and then I should get a square root, right? Okay, so that's flipping it down. It's reflected across the x-axis. Then it's translated one unit to the left. So I'm going to write what? x plus, plus, and how far am I moving it? Read it. Translate it how far to the left? One. Okay, and then what? Three units up. So what am I going to write outside the radical? plus 3. Let me double check my answer key here. But yeah, negative radical x plus 1 plus 3. Do you understand how these different parts work? I don't even have to go through and try to make it make sense in my head if I just understand how the parts of the equation work to operate the graph. Okay? And you know what? I... Hopefully I hit record. I don't know that I'm even recording any of this. Oh, I'm good. I am. Whew. Scared me. Because everybody who's not in this class is, is leaning on the videos to be able to do this. All right. So uh, number six, let y equals negative radical x and g of x be uh, square root of x plus 7. So it says, A, the graph of G is the graph of F translated seven units up. Okay. So we're looking for what is, what is correct here. All right. The graph of G is the graph of F translated seven units down. Is that correct? Yes or no? Is A correct? No. In fact, what is this? So let's just jump straight to it. What is that plus 7 doing? It's moving to the left. All right? Because what we call this right here, this y equals the square root of x, in this type of equation, that's what's called the parent function, which means it is the very most basic, this is where we start from type of equation. Everything else is a move or change of that equation. So we're moving, all we're doing is we're moving uh, our first equation seven units to the left, which is right here. Okay? All right, I think we just have two questions left, and I have like 
four minutes. So seven, given the function, and this, is, this operates under the same rules. The only thing that changes between what you see in seven and what we've been working with with six is the type of grouping symbols that we're using. So where we have been using a square root as a grouping symbol, now we're using absolute value signs as a grouping symbol. The same way in the equation I originally showed you, use parentheses as a grouping symbol. But all of the same rules are the same in terms of how we manipulate the equation or how we translate. Okay? None of that has changed. So given the function f of x equals the absolute value of x, we want to write the equation of the function g, whose graph is the graph of f translated three units to the left and three units up. Okay, so we're not changing which way it's flipped, are we? No. Okay, so we're going to start off with our absolute value. It's going to remain positive. I'm going to write an x. I want to translate it um, three units left. So what am I going to write there? If I want to go left, what do I do? Plus three and then I close up the, the grouping symbol, okay? All right, just happens to be absolute value in this case. And then I want to go three units up, so what do I do outside of the grouping symbol? Plus three, all right? And because it's absolute value, all the parent function of f of x equals the absolute value of x looks like this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go three to the left, one, two, three, and three up, one, two, three. And that's this point, and it should look like this. Does that make sense? Yes, hopefully, a little bit. OK, I know I'm kind of flying through here. All right, finally, number eight, we've got our parent function. Um, the graph on the right is the same graph rotated 180 degrees about the origin, translated one unit to the right and one unit up, write the equation of the graph. So if we're rotating something 180 degrees, we're flipping it across the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay? So both of those things are happening. So I should get f of x equals negative radical negative x, and then translated one unit to the right, so minus one, and one unit up. Well, it should look like that. So, do I see that anywhere? Should be C. Okay, or let me make it a little easier there. Did any of this lesson make sense? Hopefully, some of it? Okay. All right, we'll stop it there.